Welcome back to the Virtual Critter Connection in the Dark Edition. My name is Alex. I'm one of the presenters here at the Las Vegas Natural History Museum, and we're going to pull out another really cool animal that has a very cool um, in the dark adaptation. And who we're bringing in is not everyone's favorite animal because most people are afraid of her. Let me go get her. So it's going to be a little harder to see on that camera, but once I put her up to this one, you'll definitely be able to see her. But this is our desert tarantula. She's actually native to this area. And the funny part with desert animals is that they're usually pretty small. She's not full size yet, but if you look at her, so this desert animal is very small because in the desert, you want to be small so you don't lose water. So when you're a desert animal, you tend to stay in burrows most of the day, mostly because it's way too hot to be outside. Even for us humans, it's a little bit too hot. But with her, she'll come out at nighttime when everything else is getting active and she can go look for insects and sometimes even a small mouse once in a while. So this desert tarantula has a lot of adaptations to survive in the desert, including being a small bodied animal and she has good defenses against predators. Her main predators tend to be um, tarantula hawks, um, various other insects, including other tarantulas, birds, and sometimes even wild dogs like coyotes and, and raccoons. Now, she does have a very good defense against most of those guys. She has these irritating hairs on her abdomen, which those hairs are called uricating hairs. They are barbed or have a hook in them that causes irritation or itching when it gets into your skin. And she would aim these into the air upwards of about 10 feet. So that's still pretty impressive. She also has these fangs, but with her fangs, um, Biting is a last resort. She would rather run into a corner before she actually bites. So if the irritating hairs don't work and the um, running doesn't work, because most of the time animals that see something scurrying around is probably not something they want to go for, then they start to bite. And their venom is um, like a bee sting. So if you're allergic to it, yeah, you're gonna have a bad day. If you're not allergic to it, it's just gonna well up and kind of sting for maybe a day or so and they'll heal right over. Now this animal um, is is usually active at night because most of her food hangs out during <laughs> most of her food hangs out during uh, the twilight hours to nighttime and she would be found just outside her burrow waiting for food. So if you remember Albie's burrow tendencies, she does the same thing. With hers though, she waits and she has a mat of, oh, she has a mat of webbing that she'll just sit at the entrance to her burrow and she'll wait for any little insect to come by. And once that insect trips the, the mat, she'll come out and grab it. Now she'll use her fangs and bite into her food and turn it into a liquid inside out. And then she'll suck it up into her stomach in a straw. Now that's a weird adaptation for most arachnids between tarantulas, spiders, scorpions, horseshoe crabs, and ticks. But it's a very good strategy when you're trying to get a quick meal. Now, she does not have the best eyesight <laughs> of uh, any animal that lives in the dark. Her her sight is about an inch from her face, so she can't see me very well, but she does detect the vibrations by those hairs all over her legs. Now, those hairs are picking up the vibrations, they're picking up the air currents around her, so she can figure out if something is a predator or a possible prey source. And if it's worth the, the fight to go get food. Now, because she is a desert animal, she is way smaller than most tarantula species are. But that's because she needs to retain as much water as she can. She would only get water from her food, including crickets and various worms and other insects that prowl at night. Now, these guys don't live very long. Uh, males 
tend to live only five to 10 years. Females can live up to 20. So she will be long lived. Now, if you do see a tarantula in the wild, I would not recommend going and picking it up because tarantulas um, don't know that you are not trying to hurt them. Um, but they're very cool animals if you do see it in the wild, especially on the trails here in the valley or in the Mojave Desert because most of those are males that are looking for females. They travel hundreds of miles to go and find a female in her burrow. So a male tarantula will look for a female tarantula to go and mate with. Um, and the thing is he has to be quick because otherwise she might try to eat him and think that he's a food source. Go down. But that's why if you're between May and August, you'll see a lot of desert tarantulas making those long journeys to go and find a female. And usually they're active during the day so that they know where they're going. But at night, that's when they hunt and look for food. But these are very cool arachnids and they're usually pretty um, non-aggressive. Most new world species are. Um, but if you do see one at night, I definitely um, observe it from afar because they can shoot those hairs upwards of 10, 10 feet. But enjoy an animal that is only active usually at night. So this is our desert tarantula. My name is Alex. I hope you enjoyed our presentation. And if you do uh, come to the museum, I would definitely come out and check out our In the Dark exhibit. It is here until November 15th. And you'll also get to see other cool um, ambassador animals from sharks to toads to fish to a Burmese python. But I hope you enjoyed our presentation and we'll see you next time. Bye.